Hey there everybody, how's it going? Nice to see you again. So I'm out here on this beautiful spring day. No wind and uh, just, uh, well, I mean, it's a little breezy, but a uh, little breeze, but uh, beautiful day. Um, if you hear some noise and you can see some trucks in the background, that's I-84 running through uh, Union County, La Grande, Oregon. And, um, but uh, the interesting thing here, and I've been here before, this is the uh, Oregon Trail site. And uh, it's a place where they camped when they came through the Lad Canyon, which was a rough passage for them. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to come out here and photograph and make this video. Uh, I picked up a, um, I've been shooting film, as you know, and uh, I'm having kind of a film renaissance and appreciation for it. And um, I picked up a, Pentax LX, which is here. And um, this is old school, you know, and I've been thinking about in terms of technology, you know, trying to wrap my head around like where this fits into the program. And, um, you know, the, a film camera and even a four by five using modern film is kind of like um, a classic car, where a 4x5 might be like a, a, a 45 Plymouth or a 47 Plymouth, right? It, um, it or maybe uh, earlier, maybe a, a 1930s DeSoto or something. Whereas uh, a film camera like this, this is going to be your 57 Chevy, all right? And... Um, it's uh, it, it's totally capable of getting the job done. And in some ways, it's better than a modern car, which would be a digital camera. I mean, a digital camera to me is more like um, a, an electric vehicle, like a Tesla. It's, uh, it's um, it, it doesn't cost you much to run. It costs you a lot to buy, but it doesn't cost you anything to run. And it, uh, and it, it can't really, do everything you want it to do, but you don't know that. So, um, so when it comes to these, uh, th this camera here, the Pentax LX, really to me is, um, I, and I, I, I hesitate to make this video because I don't want to drive the prices of these up because I'd like to get some more of them. They're relatively inexpensive at this point. This is a really clean one. And this, this camera gives you that feeling of like, with this and a couple of rolls of film, like you're always gonna get the shot, okay? It's got everything you need, nothing you don't. And, you know, Pentax really pulled out all the stops with this one. This, this is, Pentax has always made a lot of really great enthusiast level cameras, but they've never really made um, the Uber Pro level stuff. Uh, this was the one time that they actually did that. I would argue that the K1 and the K1 Mark II are pretty bulletproof for digital cameras. Um, yeah, um, I'll stop there with that because uh, I'm not really sure where I would put the K3 Mark III, although it's probably more robust than most everyone else's um, pro-level stuff. But anyway... Uh, the Pentax LX really is a fascinating camera. It, it, for, for a film camera, it has everything you want. Um, I, uh, what really attracted me to this camera, again, I had one years ago, okay? But when I started looking at it, like I love my MXs and I love the fact that they're all mechanical and they're so small. But the problem I have with the MXs is the viewfinders uh, there to get to get diopter correction on the viewfinder, which I use now that I've gotten older and need to use. I use 1.5 reading glasses for when I'm in stores or at home um, to see at infinity. I don't need them, but to see, you know, um, zero to five feet, uh, this makes everything sharp and in focus. And um, the Pentax MXs don't have diopter correction. The uh, LX does. Not only does the LX have diopter correction, which is built into the viewfinder, which is removable, okay? But uh, it, um, there's, uh, you can buy three different viewfinders with varying levels of uh, diopter correction. For me, 
the uh, standard viewfinder that goes uh, one, minus 1.5 1 to zero, set pretty close to zero, makes the uh, viewfinder absolutely tack sharp. The viewfinder is removable, and uh, you push this button and turn that lever, and it slides back, and it's, it's like on rails. It's just, it's just like butter. Everything about this camera is absolutely as good as they can make it. This camera, everything you see on the top is solid brass. Not solid, but the covers are, are, are all brass. Even this little button here is brass. And uh, one of the ways you can tell if there's a lot of, you know, one of the first places that the finish starts to wear is on this button. And this button starts turning brass colored. But, um, but that is uh, uh, phenomenal, uh, having that viewfinder correction. It is also one of the clearest and sharpest viewfinders that you're going to find in any camera. All right. So, um, yeah, kudos to the viewfinder. Really fantastic. One of the things, so another thing that's really interesting about this camera is the uh, shutter exposure counter uh, counts forward like you would expect. But this is one of the few cameras that you can actually push in the rewind button and slowly rewind it and the shutter counter counts backwards precisely. So you can go back four frames. Let's say you're on frame 10. You can go back to frame six, do a double exposure, and then move forward to frame 10 again and everything will be completely registered. Um, they went out of their way to build that wind mechanism. It's a titanium shutter. It's pro level. Another thing that this camera does, which is uh, really interesting, is the automatic exposure mode. So it's aperture priority. You pick the aperture and um, you set it to automatic and the camera will pick the shutter speed, but it's real time metering. And what that means is it's metering off the film plane. So particularly for long time exposures, uh, the shutter will stay open as long as it needs. And also, while you're photographing, if your exposure changes during the time you're taking the photograph, the camera will compensate for that. So pr pretty fascinating. Um, it uses those two little LR44 batteries. And uh, I think there's an accessory battery grip that you can put on it for, to, to extend the battery life. I don't, I don't know for sure. I know there's a lot of really crazy accessories for this camera, but, um, and they have like a winder and they have a motor drive and there's all kinds of, I mean, this was really there pulling out, but this was 1980. And um, when this first came out and it ran till I think 2001 or so. So it was quite a long run that they made these cameras. And so that was state of the art in 1980. And it really, honestly, it's all you ever needed anyway, because what the way I shoot even my digital cameras today is I put them in aperture priority. <laughs> and so, um, so or, or manual. So that's all this camera has. It's all you need. And uh, so the shutter speeds are timed for accuracy uh, from, uh, for, it'll go to four seconds to two thousandth of a second. But what's really interesting, if the batteries die, the shutter speeds, uh, the uh, flash sync is one uh, seventy-fifth of a second, and um, the shutter speeds will still function in mechanical mode with no batteries from one seventy-fifth of a second to two thousand. But most importantly, the the camera will still function on bulb. Bulb is a mechanical setting. I don't, I don't know if there are batteries in the camera, if it eats the batteries, I don't think it does. So bulb is a mechanical setting. So if you want to take a 10 hour exposure of the moon tracking across the sky, you can, in, in the winter time at zero degrees, you can do it with this camera, which is really, um, like I said, it gives you everything you need. That's really pro level. Uh, that's what you want in a camera. It's the best of both worlds. You get the uh, accuracy of the electronic timing of the shutter, but if your batteries die, you can still take photographs, okay? And you can take long time exposures without having to worry about the battery, uh, which a lot of other cameras suffer from. So really fantastic. Uh, exposure compensation dial, ISO, ASA, it's called ASA here, uh, which is uh, really cool. And uh, there it is. So really fantastic camera. Love the LX, um, just a real pleasure. I mean, this, this camera, uh, everything functions on it like butter. 
And so um, just wanted to give a quick little review of the Pentax LX and what a absolutely fantastic film camera it is. Um, I, I would be amiss in not uh, uh, mentioning that uh, it does, su they, these can suffer from what they call sticky mirror syndrome, but it is fixable and, um, and you can have it repaired and repair places uh, know about it and know how to fix it. So um, definitely worth fixing if it's a problem. The later models, and you can tell a later model because it's got kind of a shroud around the shutter speed dial and the, the knob to turn the camera on and off is, is this uh, uh, half moon shroud. That's, that's a late model um, LX. Uh, I, I'm, I think the late model LXs have a different, they don't seem to suffer from that as much, maybe because they're newer. But the, the older ones that just have the lever like the MX does, um, it, that can be an issue. So um, I guess it could be an issue with all LXs, but it's something to consider that uh, that is the one thing on these cameras that uh, can have a problem. Um, there's a little rubber bumper that the mirror rests on that gets that deteriorates over time and it gets sticky. Then the mirror sticks to it. So um, there can also be uh, like if it, if it, if it gets uh, if it's a worst case scenario, there's some internal gearing. There's actually a video on YouTube of a guy that ripped all the leather off and took the whole camera apart. And, and it, it's made like a Swiss watch. I mean, the inside of this camera is really it's more mechanical than it is electronic, really. Um, but uh, but to he uh, freed it up because he had the really bad sticky mirror syndrome. So, uh, yeah, other than that, um, fantastic camera, uh, pretty much bulletproof. And um, it's uh, really a pleasure to shoot with. It's one of those cameras where it's it, it's the it's it's the poor man's Leica. Can we say that? But um, it, it really is a pleasure to, to this. This 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 is what you're looking for and what everything else should be compared to. So uh, this is in the um, Canon F1 Nikon H, uh, F3 HP kind of, a, kind of a tier of camera. And um, this was Pentax's version of it, and they did a phenomenal job. Now, the really cool thing about this camera is it takes all the Pentax lenses, except for the newer ones, right? They, they have to have an aperture ring. But most of the uh, Pentax lenses, all the good ones, have aperture rings. Um, with few exceptions, and um, it'll take the 31, 43, and 77 limited primes, and they'll work perfectly on this camera. So that's cool too. Right now, I've got the um, 50 millimeter 1.7. I have a 50 millimeter 1.4 M series, and uh, like so. So, um, and you know, all the other lenses. My FA20 works perfectly on this camera. Uh, as does my 70 to 210 f4 f series lens so it's a full kit so with the 20 and um, <clears throat> the 28m the 50m and the 70 to 210 plus my k1 mark ii i've got digital and film in one bag one set of lenses fantastic all right i'm gonna take a few snaps of the uh, wagons here bright sunny day not sure how fantastic all that's going to turn out, but uh, it'll be fun just to just to play a little bit. And um, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. We'll see you out here. Have a great one. Bye.